Hey guys, it's Kelly here again and welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to another bullet journal related video. Without further ado, I will be going through how I set up my 2023 bullet journal, all of the trackers that I have, all of the yearlies, and what theme I chose. So without further ado, let's just jump into it. So for the theme, I went with a find the light type of theme. I had a very unfortunate last year and I, yeah, it was, it was a dark year. It was a dark year. I had a lot of issues both physically and mentally and I had a lot of dark periods. So in this darkness, I found this really cool quote that I loved, which was life is not about darkness or light. It's about finding the light within the darkness. And I fell in love with it. I thought it resonated deeply <laughs> with my mental state right now. So I decided to do something concerning lights. I also found this really cool bullet journal spread that had fireflies and mason jars. I'm going to link it in on the screen. I'm going to put it on the screen and I'm also going to link it in the description bar down below if I managed to find the account because it was a beautiful spread and I took heavy inspiration from it, but it deserves some love. So if you could guys just check it out on Instagram and give it a like. Um, I'm sure that the person who inspired me to do this will really appreciate it. So for the first page, I just have a bunch of fireflies, a mason jar, and the quote that I really liked. And because I wanted to represent not only the light, but also the darkness, I ended up creating these, um, they're not like clouds, but I ended up actually drawing out the darkness, quote unquote, and it ended up looking like Starry Night by Vincent van Gogh, which if you don't know, I love van Gogh. Um, I not so much, not so obsessed with the art as much as his life and him as a person. But yeah, I just love Starry Night and I love that it, this reminds me of his art and his style. So really happy about that. And as you can see right now, I am writing the quote out. So this is basically it for the cover page. I kept it simple, but also I think it's really beautiful. And I, as I said, I am just in love with it. On the next page, I do this every year. I create a important dates page. And this in some way, last year it was Polaroids. This year I decided to go with Mason jars. You're gonna see a lot of jars in this spread, a lot of jars and a lot of lights. So mason jars for each month of the year and I added little labels on them so I would write down which month it is and I, inside I added all of the important dates, birthdays, name days and um, important holidays for every month this year. In the end, I didn't end up loving how I filled them up because I used the different colors for the different events, which ended up kind of taking away from the simplicity of the sketchy mason jars. So I'm not entirely happy with the spread, but it works and it's easy to understand. So, you know, sometimes you can't win them all. But yeah, I also added some fairy lights on the bottom because these, um, you can't really see it right now, but the jars are sitting on shelves. So I added some fairy lights on the bottom that were hanging off of the shelf and I think it looks really, really cute. Now, I tend to do things all the same way every year because I've already found my groove. I've been journaling for like six years, I think it's six or seven years now. So I've already found the groove uh, my groove and I know what works for me and what doesn't, what trackers I enjoy tracking and um, basically the only thing that changes is the design but all in all I track the same things every year so um, as I said these are the important dates there's only I think one page um, that I took heavy inspiration from a YouTuber that I will link again in the description part down below. I'll put a video wow. up on the screen to see. You've probably watched her. She's very famous. She has a lot of um, bullet journal videos, a lot of journals, um, and uh, does even live streams where her and her subscribers create spreads together, which I think is really cool and really fun. I took heavy inspiration in terms of what trackers to have in my bullet journal this year. And on the 
uh, next page that you're going to see, I have this thing called 2323s in 2023. And basically the idea there is that you have 23 things of 23 things that you want to do in the year 2023. So for instance, in 2023, I want to read 23 books. So each time I read a book, I will add a dot in the table for that. Uh, segment. I don't think I actually ended up filling it up uh, in this video. I filled in the 23 things that I want to do uh, later on. But I have already filled up a bit of it, so I'm really happy about it. For instance, I have uh, 23 meals to cook and 23 things to declutter this year. And uh, the, the, I did a clean out of my closet, so I ended up decluttering seven things which is really really good i am a third of the way there on the left side this is what you can see me do right now i have my ear in pixels now i did this last year however i did not end up creating it in a way that was easy for me to track so it was a mess it had a lot of colors in it it didn't end up looking good and it was so tiny that I I had just I had a really hard time filling it up. So this year I decided to make a big big table out of it so that I can see what's going on and I also kept the colors very simple. It is a monochrome scheme yeah, color scheme which is just blues and I have the yellow for the best days of the year, but last year I did not have a single best day. So <laughs> I think that it's gonna keep it to the blue scheme altogether. And I think it will look really cool with the different color shades of blue and it will kind of look like a gradient in some places. Um, so yeah, that is it for my ear and pixels are also known as a mood tracker. On the next page, I have these three big jars and um, Sometimes when you do a tracker and you want to track it yearly, you don't want to write down all of the days of the year. I did that last year for all of my habits and I ended up having a lot of habit trackers that remained more or less empty. So this year I decided to do something different. On the right side of the page, you will see my weeklies and I decided to keep some of the habits that I want to do and some of the chores that I have to do as weeklies and some are monthlies. So on the right side, I just have a few weeklies where I type down the numbers from 1 to 52 and I just write down for, I color in the week that I did this chore, for instance, laundry, dishes, and so on and so forth. And on the left side, I have these really big jars and these are going to be the first one, the long one that you see is going to be my create art jar. So every time I create art, I will fill in a line of color and write down the date. And that would be better for me because I won't have a tracker. I don't draw every day, so I won't have a tracker where it's mostly empty. And then at some point one month, I have like a, a few filled in dots. This way I will just fill it up more and more and more each time I create something. The second jar is going to be for the videos that I record and the third jar is going to be for the videos that I edit. So that is it for those two pages. On the next page, I have my movies and my TV shows. Now I did something very simple here. I just added a few fireflies and I kind of made them like little circular boxes for the movies that I want to see. And on the other side, I left it mostly blank and just added this really cool jar with some lights. Uh, on the bottom as a graphic element and this is where I go to write down all of the TV shows that I want to start on that I didn't get a chance to start last year or that are coming out this year. Um, as I said, kept it fairly simple, but I really love how this page turned out. It's so cute. You will see me go forward and then go back in a little bit. Yeah, now I'm going forward and then I'll go back and add the colors. So you will see how it ends up looking in the end. On the next page, I have my social media trackers. Now, last year I had a really, really hard time tracking um, my social media because the trackers that I created were not thought out very well and so um, I found it really hard to fill them in because they were small so this year I decided to dedicate two full pages for each social media so what you're seeing right now is my YouTube tracker and basically what I'm going to track is how many times I record 
edit and post videos and the subscribers in the beginning of the month and the end of the month and basically how my subscriber count changes the same for the views um, I think it's pretty straightforward. I also have this tiny little tracker with these light bulbs, which is going to be for how many, uh, how many videos that I post. So last, not last year, but the year before that, I had the goal to post 50 videos. I ended up posting barely 25. So I decided that I'm not gonna stress myself out and post something like that. So instead I just have, I think they're like 15 bulbs. So. If I manage to fill them all in, that'd be great. That would mean that I posted 15 videos this year. I would really hope that I get to do that. But yeah, we'll see. So yeah, it's fairly simple, fairly straightforward. I really hope that it's going to be easier to see kind of how my subscribers change. Um, the same goes for my Instagram tracker, which you see me create now. I again track how many subscribers I have for each of my Instagram accounts. And I also, uh, the daily calendar that you see, the daily tracker is for how many posts um, I make on which days and for which social media. So I will have three different colors that are going to be for my personal Instagram, my art Instagram and my bookstagram. So for each day that I post on one of them, I will put a color down. Now, um, this is, the most uh, that I have spent on my social media trackers. Usually I keep them very um, simple and I don't add too much, but uh, I really, really wanted to take some more time this year and create some more spreads and maybe motivate myself to post more on social media. I've already started posting on TikTok. Um, I still have almost nothing there, but I'll let you know if it, if that, if anything changes and if, it's starting to blow up or something on the next page is my last trackers and here i decided to go crazy which is crazy for me and i started cutting in right into the pages these are going to be my bills trackers now i decided to go with these dutch doors i don't typically do the dutch doors the only way i do dutch doors is if i add separate pieces and i just stick them in because i feel really bad cutting my journal up especially if it's new it just makes me feel just it just makes me feel sad <laughs> but yeah i decided to go for it this year and i have these dutch doors that are going to be my trackers for my bills and for each bill type of bill that i have i'll have a graph that represents the amount of money that it was for each month uh, on the left side the little table that you see is going to be my uh, subscription tracker and this is basically all of the things that I've subscribed to and how much it costs for each month. And on top is going to be a graph or like a line graph where I will track the totals for my bills, for all of my bills. On the right side beneath the Dutch doors are going to be the minimum and maximum amounts for each of the bills amounts of money. So yeah, we are back to the cover page where I'm just adding some uh, visual effects like a shadow and some sketchy lines to my cover page. And on the left side is where I did something that I, again, I will link in the description part down below her channel. She creates amazing stuff. This is again where I got the idea for it. Um, I did this little flap that opens up. Um, it stays hidden in the journal, but when you open it up, it opens up and it has a list with checks, a checkbox, li checkbox list of all of the spreads that I do each month. This is, these are things that I always include in my monthly, uh, spreads. So I stuck it down with a piece of tape and also on the edge, you can kind of see it, but on the edge, on the outer edge where the little boxes are for the tick. Uh, for the checkbox is I covered it up with clear tape so it would be erasable. So now when I'm doing a spread for each month, I can open this little flap out and I'll be able to see it no matter where in the journal I am. And I can add little checks, check marks for each time that I create the spread for the monthlies. That way I won't be forgetting any spread that I want to make. 
Now this is it for the video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Now we're going into the flip through. You can see all of the finished pages, uh, all of the filled in light bugs, uh, like, no, I'm sorry, fair, fire, fireflies. I always forget how they call them fireflies and mason jars and i really love how it's turning out so far i hope you guys enjoy this i hope it gives you some ideas of how to create your trackers and what to do for your yearlies or your monthlies a january setup video is coming up soon i just need to edit it and post it i'm a little bit late to the game but hopefully i uh, hopefully you still enjoy it and if you're also late like me, maybe this will be an inspiration for you to go and create your um, yearlies, yearly trackers and your next bullet journal. So thank you guys so much for watching. Comment, like and subscribe if you like what you see and would like to see more and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!